Minasan konnichiwa, Kindes. Today's video is going to be a little dark. I do have to talk about the recent events that has happened in Japan. So apparently there has been a earthquake that was, I believe, 7.1. Um, and I didn't look too deep into the news of it. I, so I apologize that I haven't talked about it um, just yet. I had a lot of stuff going on, so I didn't really have the time to educate myself on the matter. But today I am going to do so. We're going to listen to a YouTuber that I've watched for many years, and that is Aki Darist. I really, really love her so much. I've loved how much she has inspired me to be a YouTuber. So today I am going to support her video a little bit and also get educated. I do feel like this video is necessary as well because obviously my audience is mostly Japanese. So I do want to kind of be knowledgeable about stuff and be able to kind of have conversations with you guys as much as I can. I know there's a language barrier, but I am working on that. So any case, I'm going to see what she's going to talk about today and see um, if there's even any way that I could help support in these current events. And so, yeah, let's get started on the video and see what she's talking about. Hey friends, it's Akadiris, and today I wanted to address some things that have been talked about regarding earthquakes in Japan. If you guys didn't hear, last week Japan was struck with a 7.1 earthquake in the south. Joey and I actually didn't feel that. However, the following day after, an aftershock earthquake did hit a little higher up, which Ooh. was in Kanagawa, and basically anyone in Kanagawa, Tokyo, Chiba, and Saitama definitely would have felt it. That was essentially the biggest uh, aftershock Tokyo that was. happened after okay. the 7.1. And since then, the mega quake warning has been lifted. So we don't have to panic mm. about that for now. So I saw a lot of people panicking over the mega quake warning. There were people that were canceling their flights to Japan. There were people not wanting to come out of their houses. And there were people spreading so much misinformation online. Like it was honestly just getting so frustrating. So first off, as social media does but i mean it's only natural people see an event happening and they just kind of lose their minds and think something's worse than rather what it is but i mean rightfully so though like we're all humans sometimes uh we make mistakes in that way and it's hard for us to kind of process certain uh things that are traumatic um when it does happen but yeah, that's social media for you. Like, it happens all the time. What is a mega quake? It's basically an earthquake from level eight and up, which is extremely catastrophic. And it's predicted that a mega quake is going to happen within 30 years and it will hit places like Tokyo and other. I do want to say, like, really, dealing with a 7.1 earthquake, I couldn't even imagine it. Like, I've only ever had to deal with maybe one to four but a 7.1 i couldn't even comprehend it for major cities across japan it's expected that at least two million buildings will collapse and at Oof. least two hundred thousand people will be hurt or killed it's a really terrifying thing to think about and i understand why a lot of people are worried about visiting japan let alone mm -hmm. living in japan and mm -hmm. the thing is is that this theory has actually been talked about for a really long time it's just that after the 7.1 meg uh, earthquake that happened last week that a mega quake warning was finally issued that was the mm. first time that i think that that really actually happened as far as me living here for the past five and a half years i had never actually seen a mega quake warning the chances of a mega quake happening now are quite small but they were just a little bit higher after that 7.1 earthquake because we haven't had an earthquake that big in a long time so naturally the meteorologists of japan just basically kind of wanted to tell everyone hey there is a slight like quoting slight increased chance of a mega quake happening and this is within the next 30 years however people were acting like this was going to happen within the next 30 minutes there was this one tweet that went i will say though like as someone who wants to both move to japan and visit it um that is a fear that is a fear that i had to kind of carry with myself like how much do i love japan that i would put myself in danger for this country and honestly, I've thought about it long and hard, and 
that's just something I'm going to have to deal with. Whether I wanted to move to Japan or I wanted to move to Korea, who has its own problems with uh, North Korea being able to drop missiles at any moment. Um, those are the sacrifices I will have to make. Um, I, don't, I don't know if, if those theories are true or if they will truly happen to us um, in our lifetime, but it is something to think about. Um, now, obviously, pe people have been freaking out and thinking it's about to happen. Here comes the mega quake. Um, obviously, that's crazy, ridiculous, uh, but it is something that you do have to think about. Um, moving to Japan, and maybe not even just for me. Maybe I move to Japan, and Japan uh, it never has this mega quake in my lifetime. But maybe it can happen in my grandkids' lifetime, or my descendants after that. That is still something that I fear for that. So it's like, not only am I putting myself in danger, but am I putting my future family in danger? So. I can't really let myself live in that fear. I just kind of have to deal with it and just hope that when it does happen or if it ever happens, that things will work out. Um, I'll always probably like look up how to keep our um, self safe uh, while we are in Japan, just in case it does happen in my lifetime. But that's how best as I can do. I don't want to not live in a country that I cherish so much. But in any case, that's just something that I want to like rant about and talk about. Because, yeah, it, it is something that people think about when they are thinking about moving or traveling to Japan. Went so viral that it had to make headlines because this woman in Japan saw these weird looking clouds. <laughs> oh, no, I got to add. One sec. Social media took it as earthquake clouds because these clouds formed after that 7.1 earthquake. That is not how that now, works. Now again, I'm no meteorologist, <laughs> that is but not how there's that works. no way to determine an earthquake through clouds. If I saw... Sis, clouds is up here. The earth is right here. Sky, earth. What? A cloud connected to a natural disaster. I'd most likely put it towards like a tornado or a hurricane or right. a typhoon. Natural right. disasters that happen in the air that right. form with clouds. Earthquakes right. happen on Earth, not in the sky. <laughs> and so I saw this like article, actually a lot of articles that were really like bashing on this tweet because of how stupid people were being, actually believing in earthquake clouds. Cause it was like the- Please, people believe in the flat earth, so I am not surprised. This is just funny. Dumbest shit ever. So it says here that the magnitude 7.1 quake led to the Japan Meteorological Agency issuing its first ever Nankai Trough Earthquake Bulletin. Rumors on social media include, quote, I heard that earthquake clouds appear before temblers. I'm afraid of omens. So then an actual meteorologist took to this and quoted, it's impossible to determine <laughs> the effects of an earthquake by looking at clouds. Thank you. 39-year-old expert Kantaro Araki from JMA's <laughs> Meteorological Research Institute thing, yeah. Oh yeah, and he was also apparently the supervisor for the 2019 anime film Withering With You. I really like that film. I don't know how people that thought that film. clouds could determine earthquakes, but I think what might have happened is maybe some people have seen this certain type of cloud, which is called a rotor cloud, apparently. They've okay. seen this sort of cloud during or after an earthquake. So they just thought, oh, cloud, earthquake, they're connected. It was that like the most how, like tin foil. That is not how that works. That is I, two plus two equals four, not five. Like, where did you think that there was a connect? I mean, I I guess I understand a little bit what you thought it was, but that isn't something that is like common. Like that doesn't always happen. So I don't know where you got that theory from. That's just weird. It, it, what? hat conspiracy that I heard this week. Uh, it was people really in their stupid. conspiracies. And you I know can't. what's even more stupid is I've been hearing this for years now. Like before I was even like living in Japan, there were like some really stupid people that I would hear saying, oh, I saw on 4chan or 2chan that there's gonna be an earthquake that's gonna be like worse than the one that hit in 2011 next uh, week because this happened. Like why aren't people listening 
to the actual experts who dedicate their lives to this entire st because people think they're scientists they think they're scientists they think they're researchers that just sit at their desk all day doing nothing and think oh my gosh I know everything even though I have done no actual studies on it like Come on, man. Study. Why aren't people listening to the ones who actually have a degree in studying this and rather they would just... It's not even the having the degree. Are you actually studying it? Are you actually putting these theories to work, these hypotheses to work? Are you actually um, doing correct research? Because a lot of people just see stuff in videos, but they don't put it into action. Go outside and do it yourself and do your proper... Uh, data research and like collect the proper data for it because it, it seems like a lot of people just try to be these online scientists and that's not how it works that is not how this works take to twitter and go to some nobody who was just just as paranoid as they are why do yeah. we do this why is it because a tweet gets like thirty thousand likes we just like automatically they think it's say, true. Oh, that's true that is that i really there has been so many lies that have had a million likes that does not mean that it's the truth. Like, come on, man. I feel bad for the people that are actually like staying up, studying earthquakes and trying to like give the most accurate information to people only just to be debunked by paranoid people on 2chan. Literally. If you are so paranoid and you are panicking this much, it should be going towards preparation. There is absolutely mm -hmm. no way to determine when exactly a mega quake is going to happen. You can't. There's like an 80% chance you that can. it will. The only thing you can do is prep for it. That is the only thing that I can do. And, and that's just something I had to kind of just accept. I can't control the weather. I cannot control nature. The only thing I can do is try to figure out what's the best strategy to protect myself. That's the only thing that I can do and anybody else can do. It will happen and it will hit Tokyo and it will be very catastrophic and it is a scary thought. There's no way of knowing where you're going to be during that earthquake yeah. if you're coming to Japan. Your biggest tool in this whole thing is preparation. Prep. Which I feel like the majority of people who are putting their energy into things like earthquake clouds haven't even updated or even made their earthquake kit. If I took anything from that mega quake warning, it just reminded me to just recheck my earthquake bag that mm. I I've had for basically since I moved to Japan. It's always by the front door in a cabinet and I actually just like restocked it with fresh perishable foods, took away some stuff that I didn't need and put more important things in it. I actually made a mini emergency bag to take with me anywhere. It's about this big and it has a lot of really useful stuff in it because what happened during the aftershock in Kanagawa, I was actually in Shinjuku at a gay bar with my friend and I think we were just like throwing it back too hard to even feel the earthquake. But the thing is, is that my phone was actually almost dead too. So if an actual earthquake did happen in Shinjuku, right. I probably would have been in a a lot of trouble so that mega quake actually just helped me prepare more for the future it didn't make mm -hmm. me want to move out of japan it didn't make me want to leave my house it just kind of like refreshed what i already knew and just reminded me hey like remember this could happen but there were so many people that i saw that were just like taking their paranoia like in the wrong direction they were too right. busy like just doom scrolling on 2chan or too busy with your theories and conspiracies and not trying to apply actual things that can kind of help you when the event does happen. You can fear all you want, but what is fear going to do for you? That's just like crying. You can cry all you want about the situation, but you got to put some action to that situation. You can't just sit there and cry and be scared and be in fear. You have to put yourself uh, in a position where you could try to do something about it. Um, because at that point, you're just standing still. You know? So, yeah, like, people and their paranoias. I mean, it, it's only human. People are going to be like that. Um, people process information and trauma differently. So, it's only natural that this is going to happen. On TikTok and on Twitter and just looking at all of these, like, baseless claims. When you could have been using the same amount of time by going to just the nearest Daiso 
and just getting a few basic things or maybe even just like securing things in your house and trying to figure out if an earthquake happens and I'm at home, where am I gonna duck? Where am mm. I gonna hide? So with all of that said, the mega quake warning has been lifted, but the mega quake theory is still there. So I'm gonna try and shift a lot of your guys' paranoia in the right direction by telling you guys of what to prepare for. And I'm also gonna debunk a few myths that I've heard over the years about how to deal with earthquakes. So number one, when an earthquake happens, do you go under the door frame? The answer is actually no. This has been debunked so many times. No. The only reason that people believe this is because back then, in certain areas of the world that actually got earthquakes, architecture was made by material that was not stable and was easily crumbled with an earthquake. And the only thing that was still standing was the door frame. However, architecture since then has improved so much more that there are places in your house that would be better taking cover than under your door frame. Mm. I don't think the police ever found this place. Oh, Whoever did this? The doorway is not stronger than the rest of the uh, rest of the building. Being under the ta table really can make a big difference. And so, even in the worst earthquakes, getting that pr protected void so you can wait till you are rescued is most likely to happen under a sturdy table. Number two, should you leave your house during an earthquake? The answer is no, because it's going to be harder for you to navigate what's mm -hmm. going to topple over you. You have things to worry about, such as signs, walls, telephone poles. And it's, and, and, and it's not easy to walk into like a strong earthquake. Like you're moving, like, so it's hard to kind of like move at a specific spot and stuff like that. So like, you kind of want to be careful when you're dealing with that uh, walking around because it can be pretty hard. Like there's a reason why you see in the movie, people like, oh my God, oh my, and they're trying to like hold on to something and like move around, but it's hard cause that earth is moving. Um, so uh, a lot of people, they don't really think about stuff like that. Things coming off of the top of the building. Whereas that within too. your own mm -hmm. house, when you're already familiar with it, you should already figure out where you want to go run to, which is most likely going to be underneath the table or some kind mm -hmm. of other sturdy piece of furniture that you have in the house. Mm -hmm. If you are outside during an earthquake, do not go up against a wall. A lot of people do this, but the thing is, is that these walls are not sturdy yeah. enough to withstand an earthquake and they can actually crumble. What you should that do is actually like stay where idea. you are and just sit there and wait out until the earthquake is done. However, you should also make sure that you you are as far away from the open poles space. And telephone poles. I feel like open space would be a little bit better for um, outside. Maybe going somewhere that's a little bit um, more kind of open. Even in the event of something happening, you're outside and you're seeing maybe um, a building tumbling. You'll be able to kind of like maneuver if you're not just hanging, hiding on a wall. Like you're more so in uh, outside of the space, and maybe you could run before. I guess the building drops or something like that. Like, I feel like being in open space is a lot better than just like hanging onto something or hanging on a wall or anything like that. As much as possible and just sit there. And also make sure to use any bag or anything that you have around you to cover your head. Do mm -hmm. not run into a building, especially if you're not familiar no. with it because you don't know what's in that building or if it That's can topple over like, you. No. Do not try to assist someone first before helping yourself. Just find an open space, stay where you are, sit mm -hmm. down and just hold on and wait out until the earthquake is done. If you're in a public building such as the mall, do not rush for the exit because a lot of people will be crowding there which will cause more injury. Stay where you are, maybe find a pillar and stay next to that and again just hold on and wait until the earthquake is done there are two apps i really recommend getting one is nerve i have no idea who made this but they should have charged for this it's a free app and it is the most detailed I like, need to get japan that. weather app that i've ever seen in my life Second is safety tips. This is also really good. When an evacuation is issued to your area, mm -hmm. it will actually be listed on safety tips apps. People's paranoia and panic should be going towards preparation, not the internet. Right. So just stop. Like that's basically <laughs> what this video is. Just please just stop. As far as how I feel about living in Japan with earthquakes, I'm honestly okay because I feel like whenever that earthquake does happen, I feel I have the right tools and the right preparation to deal with it when it happens. Living in fear is just not the way I want to live my life. So At all. I don't really think that that's the way to go. I hope this helps you guys get some more clarification and help you guys I have something to say after this too. Way. Please do not listen to people that have absolutely like baseless information and, and look up how to make an earthquake backpack. That will right. be a lot more useful with your time. Appreciate you guys for watching. See you guys in the next video. Bye. The one thing that she doesn't mention 
she has a series of videos where she um, kind of gives you a visual and examples of what you can do in earthquake events. So I will definitely check those videos out probably on this channel. So if you guys want to stay tuned to watch those, please subscribe because I want to kind of, you you know, basically not even just educate uh, people who are traveling to Japan, but even Japanese people who may can learn some tips uh, to kind of help themselves. So like, yeah, definitely stick around if you want to for that. I also do want to say, um, yeah, like, I can't remain in fear. I have to live my life and I have to see Japan. Like, if I die there, if something tragic happens, well, at least it happened in the place that I love. I feel like that matters so much more to me. I'd rather die in Japan than die in America. Just because I appreciate not only the culture, but the people and just everything that Japan has brought me. Um, not physically, of course, but just a, just the support that people have given me. Um, just the, um, even, <laughs> this sounds funny, um, the music and just the anime and the dramas and having a place to kind of escape and... Um, that stuff may be goofy and silly, but it did do something for my life, um, especially when I was in depression and I was at a bad place. Um, Japan was just always a culture that I kind of consumed myself into because I really loved it. And it was also a culture I could just, you know, hide myself in. And so I always appreciate you know, the country to the highest extent. Like, I, I just really, really, really do. But um, anyways, I'm talking way too much. <laughs> and um, yeah, let me know if you guys want to see more stuff like this. I am, like I said, going to post some videos about her showing kind of training videos of what you can do in certain situations. But if you want to see even more than that, just let me know down in the comments below because I would very, very much love to. But in any case, thank you guys for watching, and uh, I'll see you guys next time. Matane!